Good morning, everybody. Got the jacket on. We've got our weasel here. Just about ready to go. Britt and I are taking the big dogs out to run a little bit today, and we're gonna stop by the center of Canada. It's not that far away from here. We actually live pretty close to the, what's it called again, the longitudinal, what? Longitudinal. What's the word? You know what I'm talking about. Longitudinal? Long longitudinal? Well, that doesn't sound right. The center of Canada from east to west. There's a little thingy there. I'm gonna go check it out. I've never actually gone there before, so I'm gonna take you with me. See what other adventures we stumble across along the way. You never know. Diesel, you ready to go for a ride? You ready to go for a ride in the in the truck? Yeah, you wanna go for a ride? Oh, I do. He gets just as excited as I do. Chevy, how about you? You wanna go for a ride? Go for a ride in the truck? All right, let's go guys, come on, let's go. We're really getting the littles worked up over here. Oh. Guys. You guys have a good nap. I'm sorry guys, you guys have gotta stay for a little nap. It's a little too cold out there. We'll be right back, okay? You guys got the whole bed. You have a good nap. You have a good nap, bud. My little gopher. Now I feel bad. Yeah, you shouldn't have talked about it in front of him. Jeez. My bad. Dad. Off we go on an adventure. Right, Chevy? <laughs> he doesn't like car rides. You're gonna have to get used to it sooner or later in this family, man. Someone was asking me how the new tires were yesterday in the live stream. They're actually doing really good. They, they seem to be doing good in the snow. They haven't popped yet. They still hold air. Take us from point A to point B. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what counts. And they got a little bit of an extra hum to them. I like them. And they look fancy. They look they look pretty yeah, rugged. They, they, they look make very manly. Look very manly. Yeah. Extra man points. Extra yes. On Big the man card. Caveman points. On man card. <laughs> that is a lot of pumps. This is United Driver Training. Uh, they actually have a lot of international students as well. It's one of the largest driving uh, driver trainer centers in Western Canada, I believe. If you guys are looking to get your class one or CDL, it's a great place to go. It'd be kind of cool to drive a dump truck too. That'd be fun. Just bringing dirt. Bringing people dirt. Gravel, whatever else they haul. There's a few big companies. This is one of the bigger ones in town. Oh, okay, yeah, the driveway goes way back there. I see. They got some nice equipment. Yeah, hauling a dump truck, you'd be home every night and uh, I believe you get laid off for winter. This was the street I grew up on. I lived here from when I was three, three years old till 13, so for about nine to 10 years, somewhere in there. Like almost 10 years. Gorgeous neighborhood. I always loved it. And all along the street here, there's uh, Saskatoon berries that people would go and pick. Walking their dog right where the tractor's gonna meet me. That is a farm road. I'm glad they got off the road. There we go. Yep. This house coming up right here was my house growing up. That was the yard I grew up on. I can't really see from here, I know, but I'm not gonna pull in there and ask to walk around. They painted it. It looks a lot nicer now, actually. Oh, and they fixed all the, the dents I put in the garage door with my hockey pucks. 
And then around the corner here, I had a bunch of friends that lived here. Uh, what's his name, Dimitri? I think he lived, was it this house here? Well, this is maybe that red one, or the red one, not the big one. One of these houses, anyways, I forget why, but he lived in Saudi Arabia for a while. I think his dad was working, maybe they were in the military? I don't know if we have military there, but there are some gorgeous houses back here. I want, I want this one. That is, wow. That is wow. That's how I'd describe it. Wow. Nicely hidden away. Yeah, I, th I think we had seven acres, seven and a half acres, something in here. It's mostly all bush, and there's trails leading through it. Our trail's connected with uh, these guys back here, and their trails that lead back there. Don't know who they are, but I think my dad knew who they were. Beautiful neighborhood in here. That's yes. where, uh, oh, I used to go and hang out there too, CJ. Craig, I called him CJ back then. I think he goes by Craig now, his full name. I think he lived there. This or someone nice he knew. One. This one's another wow. Yeah, these people were on my bus, but they were older than me. They were the the big kids, and I was just a little kid. That's a nice one. They were on my bus. Love this place. This this is the reason why I've always wanted to have a tree property. Because of this area right here. And then it opens up into some fields. And then my friend uh, Stefan Reimer lived down here on the farm. He's on my bus too. We were all bus buddies. We all took the same bus to school. The bus came down here every day, picked us all up. I went to his birthday party once. It was fun. Yeah. This was his farm here, I think. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. Right in here. Beautiful farms in this area. A lot of the kids I went to school with were uh, kids of farmers. Yeah, that was their yard. We're all grown up now, I think. I'm 32, so he'd be 31 now, I think. He was a year younger than me, I think. All grown up. Who knows, maybe he's running the place now. And then Karen, I think that was her name, Karen. I actually knew a real life Karen. She was my friend. <laughs> a real life Karen. She was nice though. She lived there. And I think her dad was a taxidermist. Taxidermist? Is that what the... Taxidermist. 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 One of them taxiderby people. Taxiderby. <laughs> taxiderby, yeah. He stuffed an owl for my dad. Uh, my dad hit an owl with his truck once and it uh, was still in good shape and then he stuffed it and that's hanging in dad's office now i think i've showed the vlog before do you guys remember it that was stuffed there i'm pretty sure pretty sure and then the bus turned right we're gonna go left because we want to go to the center of canada but the bus would go left back into that bush over there and there's some more beautiful properties in there yet totally hidden away no one would ever know they're there unless if you know you never know unless you know now we know now you know So just along the Trans Canada here, just off to the right, there's a little sign. Center of Canada, nothing fancy or anything. Sign and some flags. No rest couldn't area. Even put a, yeah, couldn't even put a rest area. Yeah. For an information center, nothing. Manitoba. 
here's the here's the middle. This is the big landmark. We put a sign and two flags. Now come see it and get out. Got a couple of garbage cans, a recycle bin, two picnic tables, a bunch of rocks. Fancy. Woo! You go, Manitoba. Have any of you been here? And if you have, do you see your name anywhere that you wrote on here? I know it looks, uh, it looks like a two-year-old's coloring book right now. It doesn't look that good, but the idea behind it was great. I like that idea. You come to the center of Canada, you sign your name. I get it. Interesting. What's this say? Welcome, Soyez la Bienvu. Soyez la Soyez la Bienvu. Bienvu. You've arrived at the longitudinal center of Canada. And that says, Welcome to the center of Canada where east meets west in the Canadian Interior Plains ecozone. The municipality of Taché, with its nearby communities of Lorette Dufresne, Landmark, Linden, Prairie Grove, blah blah blah, welcomes you to explore and enjoy the center of Canada. You can pause it if you want and read deeper. That's, that's pretty cool. And of course over there, we got a big sign where you can come and stand in front of it and take pictures with your family, if that's what you'd like. It's pretty cool. And if you come anytime soon, make sure you bring warm clothing. It is more than a little chilly and we're not even through fall yet, just so you know. Be nice if they had restrooms here though. That would be nice. Let's go get the boys, let them run around a bit. How was that? Now you've been to the center of Canada. Chevy seems much happier now that you got some <laughs> exercise. Yeah. I thought they'd make this place a little more fancy, but maybe they have plans for it in the future. They just set this up like this year. I thought it was last year. Was it last year? I don't know anymore. Oh, that's bright. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. What should we do now, Chevy? Right next to the center of Canada, it looks like there's a 
pretty large private collection of old tractors and farm equipment. That's pretty neat. I wonder if they, they have like public viewings in the summertime maybe? It's a museum. What does this say? Oh, walk in only, enjoy, it's free. That's cool. We'll have to come back here and check that out. And it says, thank you Frontliners Truckers. I'm guessing this will say and in there. Thank you Frontliners and Truckers. So you know they're friends. Yeah, well hey, we'll have to come check this out in summertime. It's called Pete's Center of Canada Heritage Museum. Pretty neat. We'll wait for the snow to melt in spring. We'll come check it out. So we went home and Britt and the dogs wanted to stay there. I saw one of your comments yesterday where you wanted to see the uh, cab over truck in a little bit more light. I figured I'd quickly run over there now before the sun goes down. I didn't even notice it when I was there. I, I think it's at Trucks Unlimited up here, right? They had the cab over. I sort of want to see it myself too. We obviously can't take a look inside these trucks at all because of the virus going around right now. We can't. I'm not even going to bother going in there and asking about it. And I'm not interested in buying a truck right now. Um, I hope that that's what you got off yesterday's video. No, I don't want to buy a truck, but if I did want to, you know, my buddy's old truck is for sale, apparently. Is this where we saw the cab over? Somebody was saying something about a cab over that I didn't pay any attention to, like, like in the vlog. I paid attention to your comment, and that's why we're back here when the sun is still a little higher in the sky. Where's the cab? Was the cab over in Blumenschnort? I bet you anything it was over there, wasn't it? I don't want to go all the way to Blumenort today. We'll go there tomorrow and check. See if we can find it then. That's not here anywhere. Look at this. There's the Volvo we were looking at yesterday. That's John's truck. Pretty sure. Still got plates on it. So I don't know if it's uh, actually for sale or not. Maybe it's just parked here getting some work done to it. I don't know. No idea. Like I said, I haven't been in contact with my friends the way I should be. No, I guess not. Okay, it must have been in Blumenor. I must have misread your comment. That's uh, uh, not too far down the road. It's not. You know, yeah, we'll go. Let's go. Let's go see if we can find the cab over. This guy was talking about in my comment section. I sort of want to see it too, because you never see cab overs. Uh, well, very rarely see cab overs on this part of the planet. So when you see one, it's sort of like a head turner. Ooh, look at that. Thing has no nose. Here's that uh, new Blumenort sign we were talking about last night, and it was uh, too dark to see it. You can probably see it today. You see it? Look at that. It's just a plain green sign, Blumenort. The last one was way nicer. Why'd they do that? I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Thumbs down from Trucker Josh. Oh, ho, ho. That doesn't happen often. Okay, so Marcus Reese. I'm. I'm talking about your comment from yesterday. You said you didn't, that you wanted to see the day cab, or I mean the, pardon me, the cab over in the comment section. You must have seen one in my video here that I didn't see. So we're back here at Peterbilt. Oh, there it is. You're right. There it is. Yeah, you don't see those that often here. There's that Kenworth we were looking at. See, I was talking about those windows in the back of the sleeper. I like that. That's an extra light. And this was that uh, the purple truck I was talking about. I don't like the color, but I like the truck a lot. Very much like the Peterbilt I was in, except it has a window in the back. I like it. And the stacks in the front. Makes it look nice. Okay, so let's go look at that cab over over there. Let's go take a look. I like these trucks. Very nice. Okay, so this isn't actually... This is like a... A flatbed triaxle tandem truck. Is that what you call it? A triaxle? Just a. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So, yeah, these cab overs are quite rare to see on this side of the planet. This is an old Freightliner. I wish they still made more of them. I don't know why they don't. I always wanted to drive one. That looks awesome. Would you drive it? 
I mean, even if it wasn't just a, a flatbed truck, what if it had like just a regular tandem and you could haul a, a, a pull a regular trailer with it? I guess my question is, would you drive a drive a cab over? I think it looks pretty sweet. If I was given the opportunity, I'm not gonna climb up on it or touch it or anything, but uh, if I was given the opportunity to, to uh, drive a cab over for a while, I'd find, a very, find it very difficult to say no. Because they're fascinating, right? We don't see them that often out in this part of the world. I wonder what they would use this for though. Eh? Just roll forward just a little bit here. Mm. Yeah, it's got no plates on it, which means it's for sale. Huh. Really cool. If I had unimaginable wealth and tons of extra money just flying around everywhere that I had absolutely nothing to do with, I'd buy it just for fun. Drive it around. Yeah. I don't know what I'd haul with it. Whatever can fit on it, I guess, and tie it down and give her. Really cool. Thanks for pointing that out, Marcus. I didn't even see it last night when we were here. By the time we got here, it was so dark already. So yeah, I guess my question that I posed to you is, would you drive it? Would you drive a cab over? We can all thank Marcus Reese in the comment section for, uh, pointing that out for us and giving us a good title for the vlog today. <laughs> Would you drive it? My answer is yes. But I don't know, maybe people who have driven cab overs in the past know something that I don't know. Maybe they're very uncomfortable. I heard that they're a little bit more uh, of a rough ride than a regular conventional truck, but maybe, maybe not. I don't know, European drivers are probably just typing furiously right now, defending the honor of the cab over. I get it. I get it. That's all they have out in Europe. I wonder what Europeans think when they come visit North America and they see our trucks, like a nice Kenworth W9. I wonder what they think of when they get into a truck like that with a big nose out in front of you. I bet they feel like they're driving like a, a big tank, like a big limo tank. And then there's us here complaining that the sleepers are still too small. <laughs> we need more! Give us more! We need bigger! Bigger sleepers! How about we just put wheels on my house? And I'll just go trucking with that. Just take my house everywhere. <laughs> Everything's got to be so big out here. I love it. But that's one reason I really want to go visit Europe. Because everything is so like close together. There's so many people so close together love to be able to go and see, uh, see what life is like there. Sounds interesting. Doesn't sound as fun though. I'm gonna be honest with you. Sounds like it's a lot more fun to live on this side of the pond. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little biased. Okay, I'm a lot biased, but I think, I think it's a lot more fun living on this side. I don't know, prove me wrong. I've never been to Europe, so I can't really talk. We're being bad today. We're getting uh, McDonald's. That is all. I believe that would be everything, yeah. No, thank you. Super duper. I think I'm not saying it with enough enthusiasm. I get a little nervous at the window. I've really got to sell it. Super duper. I think I'm being way too casual about it. Super duper. I think I've really got to, really got to sell it next time, I think. Okay, so I just rewatched the footage of myself. That was a bad super duper. That was a fail. That was, a, I may as well not even say it if that's how lame I'm going to say it. Super duper. Super duper. Really? I got it. Super duper! Woo! Right? You gotta be excited. 
No wonder no one's saying anything back to me. I always, I always hold back. Get a little bit nervous, I guess. You know, I gotta, I gotta get past that. But man, that was sad. That was embarrassing. I am a way better super duper guy than that. I've got to practice. Super duper. No, too much, too much. You don't want to scare them either, right? Hey, they got their arches fixed, finally. Those golden arches on the sign there have been burnt out for like a month. At least, if not more. Finally, you can find McDonald's again. Probably why we went and got it today. <laughs> oh, no shame, I regret nothing. We're having McDonald's tonight. And that was a delicious, delicious double Big Mac. But we have regrets. Big regrets. Big regrets. You know, we don't know what it is about McDonald's. You get so excited about it. You just, you have to have it. And then you eat it. And then you kick yourself all night wondering, why did I do it? And you get the mixed stomach ache and the mixed swelling. And yeah, it just makes you sick every time. It gurgles. It's the worst. Give it a week and we'll be driving past McDonald's again, mouth watering, talking about how I want a Big Mac. I think they put drugs in their food. I bet they do, don't they? Isn't there a documentary on that? That's it. Salad for the rest of the week. We're running to the store tomorrow to get a couple things. Salad. Salad. We don't eat out that often. This was supposed to be a treat, but it was a Trojan horse, I think. I think so too. And it shouldn't have been so soon after we ordered pizza a few days back. Yeah, we're not the most greatest example to follow. Guilty as charged. <laughs> we're, we all have our weaknesses. My weaknesses are McDonald's Big Macs. My weakness is just pizza, burgers, fries. Yeah. Pretty much anything that tastes good but isn't good for you. But we don't eat out and eat garbage that often. It's just no. when we do, it's supposed to be a treat. We get all excited about it and then we gobble it down, tastes so good, and then an hour later you're like, oh no. <laughs> Why? That's exactly what I asked myself. <laughs> but anyways, we're gonna wrap this vlog up here. The question of the vlog that I wanna know in the comments down below is the cab over truck, would you drive it? Would you drive a cab over of any sorts? And I guess this question is more geared towards the North American drivers and the uh, Australian drivers. Do you guys have cab overs out there? Because I know you European drivers, you, you're all about the cab overs. Maybe a question for you guys in Europe is would you drive a conventional truck with a hood? Or do you prefer the cab over? What's your favorite kind of truck? Let me know down below. It's very rare to see a cab over out here, so we get very excited about it. So I'll be uh, down in the comments section there. See what you have to say. I've got to go to bed though. That's what I've got to say. And we'll see you tomorrow.